Welcome to Conversation with Zaki Baruti, with your host, Zaki Baruti. And like always, I want to give a shout out to my biological family, what's happening, to the Universal African People's Organization, what's going on, as well as to New Life Evangelist Center family, headed by Reverend Rice. Keep up the great work, and a shout out to our cameraman, Bob. On that note, we're going to have another great show because in studio uh, is a young lady who's been a longtime friend and colleague who has put up her roots from St. Louis, moved to Stockton, California, and making a difference in that community. And I'm speaking none other than Monica Graves. Welcome to Conversation with Zaki Baruti. How you doing, Mr. Baruti? I'm doing well. It's doing. so glad to be here. So Absolutely. Be here. I'm so happy that you're here with us, okay? For sure. Uh, when I began my show, first of all, I, I failed to make mention, you are the founder and CEO of Vision Vocations Incorporated, a vocational training and residential campus. So uh, we'll be discussing that as well as just the whole range of entrepreneurship in that you have been an entrepreneur and is an entrepreneur. But before we begin, I always want our audience to know a little bit about the person who I'm interviewing. So share with the audience wherever you want to share about yourself, you know, your upbringing or however you want people to know about Monica. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you uh, for this interview and the opportunity to share my story and share uh, what I'm doing and um, how it can impact, it, it's impacting Stockton, but it can also impact St. Louis as well. But I'd like, like to thank you for the invitation. Okay, now I know. Yes. So again, okay. about your background. So I am a native St. Louisan, a product of Normandy School District. Um, I love this city. Um, I later moved to Stockton, California, where we have similar problems as St. Louis. Um, I think the homelessness is more extreme, and especially amongst teenagers. Um, so I was in the same boat many years ago here in St. Louis. I had children very young. I found myself at uh, Larry Rice at some point. Oh, is that right? Yes. Okay. But it made me pursue um, my skills, my, my trade, which was cosmetology. It made me go to top Progressive Beauty College here in St. Louis, Missouri, um, open salons, and gave me an opportunity to engage the community on all kinds of levels, have opportunities to grow. Uh, but as a cosmetologist, I was able to feed my family, take care of myself, be self-sufficient. That's what I want to give to the kids of Stockton, the false, in particularly the ones that are in foster care, because right now they're being warehoused, pretty much. They don't have uh, good facilities or a place for them to go, and lots of them are sleeping under bridges, you know. But if they have a skill, they have skills, um, they can pursue entrepreneurship, or they can uh, be able to be self-sufficient. So that's our goal with Vision. Okay, then. Now, <clears throat> that, that, that was, this was a total surprise when you said, so for a period you were homeless. How long were you homeless? For about a year and a half. When I graduated uh, from high school, I had a kid. Um, yes, I lived at Larry Rice. Oh, and Reverend Larry Rice. Uh, yes. Which facility? Facilities. Right downtown, there was a church um, in a downstairs of a church, but uh, people were friendly and we got along and it, it kept us off the street for a time and a period. Now, period that's, time. that experience yes. of homelessness, how would you describe it? I mean, just like. Okay. Um, hopelessness. You know, you, you know, you don't feel like you'll ever make enough money to pay first and last month's rent to get into an apartment. but. Um, it's a lonely experience, but you do meet a lot of people who are in a lot worse sh uh, shape than you're in, you know. But right. um, it did make me um, more passionate about um, finishing school <laughs> and being able to support myself. Okay, and then. the route I went, again, was vocational training. Right. And so that's what we are pushing, all of the um, vocational training, the trades, the, yes. Now, <clears throat> I've known you more or less as an entrepreneur. Why, uh, what motivated you to become an entrepreneur and what is the significance and the importance of being an entrepreneur? Um, what motivates me is that I think that I'm very creative and when you're working for somebody you have so many boundaries of how far you can create. You have to do things their way um, and you only get a fraction of the profits. You, know, you just get paid a little bit. Having a job is kind of just over broke and it sends you on a hamster wheel many times. Um, 
being an entrepreneur gives me the freedom, has given me the freedom to create, to be creative and to pretty much employ other people. Um, it's given me a, a lot of freedom. That's the biggest piece of it. I'm free to make, uh, be as financially secure as I want to, as much as I'm willing to work and put into it. Okay, yes. at the pinnacle of you being an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and owning your own business, and what business did you own? So I, I've owned beauty salons here in St. Louis uh, since I was about 17 or 18 years old. Uh -huh. So I started into entrepreneurship early. Um, oh, I got to give credit to, I took an entrepreneurship class at Normandy High School, so I have to give credit to Ms. Moncure, who was my instructor, and I think that originally sparked my uh, interest in truly being an entrepreneur. But I've owned salons here, I've owned daycare centers here, I've owned catering companies here. I've always just um, pretty you much engage in different money, entre yes. entrepreneurship. At yes. what height uh, in terms of employees, uh, what the maximum of the number of employees that you've had at one time? Um, maybe 40, 50. Is that right? Yes. Okay, we, we were in the schools for a long time doing after school programs and we were able to hire a lot of people, put a lot of people to work. So if somebody, you know, out here in the listening audience uh, say, wow, I want to be an entrepreneur, what would you, what would be some of your advice to that person or to those persons? I would say go for it. Absolutely go for it. Believe in yourself enough to invest in yourself. Um, but go for it. But know that uh, you're going to wear, you may, in most cases, wear all of the hats at one time. So it's, it's. You know, it's something you have to have true commitment and dedication to your dream, your goal, and be focused. Now, I've always heard um, that in the process of building a business, it really takes a couple of years before you can uh, reach that level where you see profitability, that kind of thing. Is that the reality? But before you answer mm -hmm. that, we got to take a break. How I thank God for Sakiba Rudy and all the folks that are working with him that have stood with us all these years to get back into 1411 Locust so we can feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, reach out among those that are in need and be a beacon of hope to so many that have lost hope. It seems like all hell's broke loose in downtown St. Louis ever since they shut this building down in April 2017. I mean, they've had to put barricades on Washington Boulevard, bring out more police and everything else. Why, we can be that light. We can be that salt that Christ has called us to be. If we'll pray together, work together, and do everything we can now to move forward and get into 1411 Locust. Uh, we need individuals who will help us make uh, various repairs, people of faith that will pray with us and believe God with us for the resources that we need. We need to stand steadfast and see that the, the city doesn't give in to the big money interests. And there's a lot of big money interests that put a lot of pressure for our mayor on our mayor. You need to pray for our mayor at this particular time, uh, that she'll stand with the poor. There's a lot of pressure on her at this time. And I want to encourage you to, to just seek God as to what he would have you share. You can write me, Larry Rice, at P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, that's 63166. If you feel that there's someone that I need to visit or, or Chris Aaron needs to visit, call us at 314-421-3020 to make them part of the team at this particular moment. If you'd like to have us come speak at your church, again, you can call 314-421-3020. Ask for myself, Larry Rice, or Chris Aaron or Rice. And we'll, we'll be happy to come and share this vision. What a great God we serve. And how I thank God for those of you that have been praying, those who have been standing with us throughout the years. The door of opportunity is open so we can reopen this building and be a refuge to the hurting and the homeless and help provide them with so many things that they need at this particular time. Yes, I believe that God is a miracle-working God. And as we continue to remain steadfast, we're going to see Him do exceedingly beyond what we can even ask or think. How important are St. Louis Metro passes to the needy? To provide stability and permanent change to the homeless, they need jobs. But how do they get transportation to look for work when they have no money? And when they find a job, how will they get there? Become a part of NLEC's Metro Pass program and help bring enduring change to a life. I have doctor's appointments that I have to attend, uh, going to seek jobs and putting in applications. I really would like you to understand the importance and the need for this ministry and anything that you can do to keep this ministry going, please know that it is an extension of God's love. 
Welcome back to Conversation with Zyke Brewery. In the studio with me is an uh, entrepreneur and as well as the founder and CEO of Vision Vocations Incorporated, Ms. Monica Grays. And we were talking about entrepreneurship on the other side of the break. And I was asking you in terms of, you know, a lot of small businesses take a minute to really grow. Would you uh, yes. say that? And uh, what would be your advice to those who or just entering into uh, trying to be a business person? I would advise them to have a solid plan, um, spend some time laying the foundation, which is in your planning. Uh, don't write a plan and just sit it, on, sit it up somewhere. You touch it every day and work your plan. Um, the most success I've experienced, it, it was all relative to the best plan I've ever had and sticking to that plan and working my own plan through. Um, I think setting a foundation and the policies and procedures of things and um, understanding your own budget and staying within it, um, really understanding your business plan. Um, I think the planning is the most critical part in, as far as helping a business to have some longevity. Now, you have been a long-time resident, born and raised here in St. Louis. Yes. Then all of a sudden, uh, uh, I know you had this big, beautiful facility then you moved. Uh, where did you move yes. from St. Louis and went to Stockton? Uh, well, you know, we grow up, and I lived in St. Louis for 40 years, and children are grown, and it's time for me to go find myself. So I moved to Sacramento. I went to Le Cordon Bleu Culinary oh, Institute. Oh, you moved to Sac Sacramento yes. before you settled in Stockton? Which, just about an hour away from uh, Stockton. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that was just a big, that leap, that leap of faith, and... Going to culinary school and graduating. Now, when you moved, yes. did you know anybody in Sacramento that you or was I knew, it just... I knew one person in Sacramento, and that was a friend of a friend, um, and said, hey, girl, you come on out. You can rent my house. And he moved to a whole other city with um, his wife, at, who was a police officer, and they had to move. And it worked for me, because right down the street was Le Cordon Bleu. Uh, so that entered me into I've always catered. Uh -huh. But I've always wanted to do it professionally and own restaurants. And so that's what I did when I moved to Sacramento. First, I, I taught culinary school at Discovery High School for a couple of years. Um, but again, I'm an entrepreneur and um, I'd rather do it my way. I'd rather do it. So I created a catering company with the students and um, later opened a restaurant, um, opened a second restaurant. Um, but I, I understand that I really like working with the young people. Okay, then, so yes. how long were you in Sacramento? Eight years. Eight years? Yes. Now, then you moved from Sacramento to Stockton, I moved. where you're currently now. Yes, I am currently in Stockton, California. And again, Stockton has a similar problems to St. Louis. Uh, and it's a pretty rough city, um, but lots of opportunity. But I, what I'm... What I'm experiencing is the hopelessness with teenagers. They don't have a chance without our help. Oh, yes. in, in Stockton. In it's Stockton, a... yes. And Stockton is a city that's very close to the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, the cost of living is not as high as living in San Francisco. But people live in Stockton and work in San Francisco. Um, but the poverty, the homelessness is tripled in the past year. Um, because people just can't afford the high, the expensive housing of, in California. So seeing that hopelessness among the young people mm -hmm. and the homelessness, so that motivated yes. you for the creation of Vision Vocations Incorporated? Exactly. So in 2020, I, I just was inspired, and I had some time on my hand where I can write. So I was inspired to pull all of, to kind of collaborate all of the things that I've done um, into a combination which comes up with Vision Vocations. So Vision Vocations is a vocational training program, residential campus, so everyone lives on campus, um, but it's an accredited culinary academy. It's a credit, an accredited cosmetology academy, full service daycare center, uh, security guard training program, life skills programs, independent living programs, transitional living programs, um, just all with supportive services. Like we have a laundromat on campus, a general store on, on campus. Uh, kids are learning budgeting and how to support themselves and how to, to understand that they have options. Um, and you don't necessarily, uh, the biggest employer 
in Stockton is the state mm. of California, you know, so everyone works and, and they retire and get a pension, that's the hope. But if not, I mean, if you don't, you're not degreed, this is something that you can accomplish in a year going to trade school, come out with a, a, a viable skill and be able to support yourself. Now, is this uh, concept actually in play or is this a vision? I see you got vision. Yes. Yes, and I just want to put, yes. Um, well, many parts of it has been in play for many years. We've done, we've done a lot of like, training kids in culinary, cosmetology. I've mentored in those areas for a lot of years. So, but right now, we've located a building in downtown Stockton, and we're, uh, it's 40,000 square feet and the heart of downtown Stockton. Um, and this will be the home of Vision Vocations. This will be the, ca the campus. So you so so you 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 do have a site and are you operating out of that site or are you in preparation for operating? So we're in preparation. It's a state agency building. It's a, a very nice building. Uh, we've been fully funded, so we're breaking ground now, and we'll be ready around April of 2024 to, okay, to get then. started. Yes. So, in terms of the young people coming there, how are you going to be choosing them? But you can answer that on the other side of the break. God loves a cheerful giver. Even though things are really tough right now, you can make a difference in the lives of so many. New Life has been doing this work for 50 years, and we have seen God's gracious goodness through people like you who have participated in this work. There are so many people who are suffering more people are, are becoming homeless for the first time uh, with the rising pro costs of uh, inflation and food and housing and so many other commodities. We need help. You can make a difference today in the lives of so many. I'm reminded of all of our partners throughout 50 years who have been blessed as they've given to the work of new life. We want you to participate and feel God's blessing working in and through you as you work in this ministry. We need partners like you. Uh, we have so many people, and we, we just give God the glory and the praise. We are thankful for um, even people like Bernie Hayes and Saqib Baruti and all the work that they do through New Life. If you enjoy their show, uh, give God the glory. We're so thankful that they have been faithful with new life for so many years. You can make a difference today by giving your tax-deductible gift to P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, or go to newlifeevangelisticcenter.org, or call to get involved in this incredible work. As we feel the darkness pressing in upon us, both personal needs and needs in the world, society as a whole, it's easy for us to get depressed. And when we're depressed and negative and feeling hopeless, we're not going to be able to help anyone. That's why I daily have to draw strength from the Word of God. That's why I have to go on walks in the midst of the wonders of God's works. And that's why I have to be able to see something that's worked for many, many years in my life, is that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That He's with us always, even to the end of the world. And that we can be a light, letting His love and power flow in us and through us in a cold, dark world. There are people hurting out there. There's people that are crying out to God at this particular moment in the midst of their desperation. Can we be led by the Holy Spirit to them? Can we believe God to reach out and let His love flow through us and by faith help them meet their needs? That's the challenges that the Lord gives us in His Word. Experience the joy of really helping somebody else and letting the light and love of Christ shine in you and through you. Welcome back to Conversation with Zaki Baruti. In studio with me is Monica Graves, who has a great vision, and she's actualizing that vision for a vocation in, uh, uh, institution, basically, to focus on uh, young people. Uh, on the other side of the break, I was asking, uh, um, first of all, how many students you looking at have uh, been in uh, the institute? I can house 45. Yeah, so they are actually be living on campus? Yes. Okay, now, what would be the process by which you choose the young people, and, and, and what are the age groups? 
I the mean, age group, uh, these kids are between 16 and 22. 16 and 22. So, uh, yes, and we've uh, chosen to work with foster care program, the very broken foster care program, and, and in California, it really needs some help. Foster care has become the highway to prison, believe it or not. In, uh, the largest population of people in prison were once in foster care. Um, the large uh, um, percentage of kids who were in foster care or homeless, make up the homeless uh, population in California. Um, so foster care right now, it, it's struggling. It really needs some help. Now, why do yes. you say it's broken, the foster care system? It's because we have more kids in foster care than we have programs and agencies to help them. And again, they're in, in California, they're literally being warehoused in just large facilities, just a place for them to sleep. And we have to go beyond uh, housing kids to giving them skills and the, and looking at the whole child, looking at the mental, the physical, and the spiritual, and the and the, the spiritual side of them. Yes. So, back to my question in terms of how will you be choosing those? I mean, so you are you going into when you say the foster foster system? Uh, yes. So you have you gonna be having a working relationship with? Yes, the, we'll get referrals from foster care and CPS. Because there are some emergency situations. Okay. Gives me housing. And yes. then in terms of choosing the, uh, those who will, uh, are you, is it going to be just a purely uh, males or is it going to be a combination of males and females? There's a combination. We have, we'll take both boys and girls. Yes. Okay, then. Yes. And um, is it like on a first come, first serve basis or are you going to be interviewing those to bring them in? It's or how? a first come, first serve. You know, uh, we will work with uh, kids from uh, surrounding counties as well. But, yes, until we fill up, then, yes, it, 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 which I know we're going to do. So we have an aggressive expansion plan because even we are only able to house 45 at this site. So mm -hmm. I'm looking to quickly expand. Now, when you have that facility, you raise the issue because I, I know some young people who become uh, involved in the foster s uh, system, have had trauma and you know what have you so I know you'll be teaching them skills so are you going to have on hand uh, uh, counselors and what have you to help them deal with wherever trauma or their circumstance? Yes we, you have to so they're immediately paired with uh, case managers and um, uh, therapists and also the mentoring program um, but it's the environment that's that we're creating that will be very healing um, and it's to create and once young people get really busy and into what they're into you you find that a, a lot of um, that's where healing begins I think with le learning how to love themselves and to believe in themselves and have hope in themselves see that there's a chance and then they're supported by responsible adults and a supporting program a supportive program uh, they have a total different out attitude, totally different. Uh, the hopelessness kind of, kind of goes away. You know, something yes. that just as a former educator, I was just thinking um, and making a recommendation, will you have a yes. library on hand to uh, st help yes. stimulate their mind and, you know, in terms of reading? Because yes. a lot of our children who graduate have not read a novel or, or history yes. books or what mm -hmm. have you. So, uh, yeah. So I, that's a good idea. That's a good thing to bring up. But I'm not sure if I'll have a library because we're doing so much online right now. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, that's a literary, literature is just it's important. Okay, then. Now, what, what is the, just out of curiosity, what is the approximate population of uh, Stockton? It's about 316,000 in, the, in it, the city area. Okay, yeah. and how does it break down racially? Okay, Stockton is about 40% 40, um, 40 Mexican, mm -hmm. and in the downtown area, it's about 60% Mexican, 20% mm -hmm. um, Asian, um, about 12% African American, and the rest is others. It's, Stockton has been named the most diverse city in America. Oh, is that right? Yes, oh. and, and so it is truly just very diverse. It's, my okay. first um, true experience of that kind of diversity. Okay, then. Yes. Well, we got to take our last break. These are very difficult times, and so many people are giving up. I want you to experience hope 
in the midst of God's cathedral of creation. And that's why I have a free book that I want to send you. So that hope can begin to flow in your life. And you'll be encouraged to go out in the middle of creation and hear the birds and the trees and all of creation speak hope to you. And I'll send this to you absolutely free of charge. All you have to do is just write me Larry Rice at P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri. That's 63166. Or you can call 314-421-302 and request your free copy of Experiencing Hope in God's Creation. We need hope right now. And hope is just right there, ready to fill you. You may be in a dark, dirty, lonely place at this moment. I have a whole chapter on that, how seeds are planted there and how they sprout. That and much more right here. Just write me at P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri. That's 63166. And receive your free copy. Back to conversation with Zaki Brody, and we only have a couple more minutes with uh, Monica Grays, who is the founder and CEO of Vision Vocations Incorporated. Monica, early on, you may mention uh, off air that uh, you do grant writing and um, um, and counseling. Also, uh, if anybody wanted to um, uh, reach out to you to get some help in grant writing. And you grant write for what, nonprofit organizations or what have you? Explain that. Okay, so I have an organization uh, called the Dream Incubator. And I work out the of the, the Dream Incubator. Okay, Dream Incubator. And it's community business consulting. Okay. okay? Um, I work out of the United Way on Thursdays and Mondays. Um, so, but I can be, you can reach me personally if you're needing help developing your, uh, taking your um, ideals from dream stage to reality to putting it on paper, documenting it, um, and submitting it, um, and getting it all legitimate. Those are things that we help, um, and help you develop your plan and your ideals and things like that. So I can be reached at 916-923-8891. So uh, I'll yes. say it again a little bit slower so that some, okay. it's cause there's some people out here yes. who have some dreams and it needs need yes. to be developed. All right, go so ahead. So 916. 916. 923. 923. 8891. 8891. Yes. So I really appreciate you uh, on two things. One, acknowledging that teacher because educators are very important in shaping the lives of people yes. that uh, put that into you about being an entrepreneur. And then for you having the experience of homelessness, now you're taking that experience to help others. Um, so in terms of out here, in, right here in St. Louis, you know, Reverend Rice has been doing that for eons, years. Yes. What would you say to those folks here in St. Louis as it relates to Reverend Rice, the need for support of him? Yes, absolutely. Um, Reverend Rice has paid so many, I mean, his organization and the programs has supported us with paying gas bills, electric bills, and housing, and in many cases been the only option. We haven't had many other options. Uh, so it would, it, it be, would be just smart to support uh, Reverend Rice because he supports us. He supports uh, the people who most need him. Yes. Okay. Well, on that note, uh, truly appreciate you being sharing some time with us. On that note, uh, like always, I encourage everyone out in our listening audience, make sure you vote at every upcoming election. Know the issues, as well as support progressive organizations that speak uh, truth to power and have a track record. And so we say uh, everybody needs to belong to an organization and vote. We say join the Universal African People's Organization. So on that note, again, thank you, Monica. Thank you. And may God continue to bless you, and may God continue to bless our listening audience.